The purpose of these videos is to standardize the performance of transthoracic echocardiographic studies and to help the learner optimize and troubleshoot image acquisition. This video will demonstrate how to obtain a parasternal long axis view. We will not perform any measurements at this time or use color Doppler. The second part of the video will provide tips on how to optimize the view. Even in the intensive care unit, you should try to position the patient in left lateral decubitus unless there is a contraindication, such as spine precautions or when not appropriate in case of severe cardiovascular or respiratory instability. The goal is to shift the heart laterally. Often, positioning a wedge or a pillow underneath the right side is necessary to support this position. Try to practice performing the examination from either side of the patient. In ICU, one side may not be easily accessible due to presence of other pieces of equipment. However, unless you're performing an emergency study, try to position yourself in a comfortable position. The parasternal long axis view can be obtained by placing the probe between the second and fourth intercostal space along the left parasternal border, close but not over the sternum. The transducer indicator should be pointing toward the patient's right shoulder. Always start setting the depth at 20 to 24 centimeters. This will allow to adequately assess possible presence of left pleural or pericardial effusion, as well as descending thoracic aortic pathology. Subsequently, you will decrease the depth to focus on cardiac structures. Usually the depth will be set between 10 and 16 centimeters. The criteria for an optimal parasternal long axis view are the following. The apex of the left ventricle should not be visualized. The mitral valve should be positioned in the middle of the screen, with the aortic valve slightly positioned on the right. The interventricular septum and the infralateral wall should appear horizontal. Two cusps of the aortic valve should be clearly visualized and appear symmetric. When focusing on aortic root and ascending aorta, the transducer should be slided superiorly, usually one intercostal space higher. Careful manipulation of the transducer will allow you to optimize the view in the mass vast majority of patients. If the apex of the left ventricle is visualized on the screen, two manipulations should be attempted. Rocking of the probe towards the sternum. Sliding of the probe towards the sternum. If the aortic cusps do not appear symmetric, a slight rotation of the transducer should be performed in either direction. If rotating the transducer is insufficient to optimize visualization of aortic cusps, tilting the tail of the probe in either direction may help. Similarly, you should be able to insinate the entire LV long axis in its maximum diameter. To achieve this goal, two transducer manipulations can be attempted. Rotating the transducer in either direction will allow you to identify a sonographic plane that is parallel to the left ventricular long axis. You may then tilt the tail of the transducer upward or downward. You may have to adjust both rotation and tilting several times until you obtain an adequate view. Finally, if the interventricular septum and the infralateral walls do not appear horizontal, two manipulations can be attempted. Sliding of the transducer superiorly, usually one intercostal space higher. or rocking the footprint toward the sternum. Sometimes you will obtain images that identify structures that should not be insinated in a true parasternal long axis view. For example, from the parasternal long axis view, you may see 
the right ventricular outflow and inflow views. If, while trying to obtain the parasternal long axis view, you start seeing the right ventricular inflow tract, you should tilt the footprint looking upward. Conversely, if you start seeing the right ventricular outflow tract, you should tilt the footprint of the transducer downwards and or rotate the transducer counterclockwise by a few degrees. It is more likely to insinate the right ventricular inflow tract if you position the transducer on a lower intercostal space, while you are more likely to see the right ventricular outflow tract if you slide the transducer higher on the chest. Keep in mind that the best resolution for each structure is obtained when the ultrasounds and therefore the transducer footprint are perpendicular to the region or structure of interest. Therefore, the best image quality for a structure may not be obtained with the transducer perpendicular to the skin, but with a slight tilting and or sliding of the transducer within the same intercostal space. This concludes our video on how to obtain a parasternal long axis view. Remember to only do one transducer manipulation at a time and to do very small transducer movements as they significantly change the scan planes, especially when the structures are deep.